Hi, this is a small walkthrough of the graph editor in Frog. So the graph editor is where we um, create new graphs. Um, in fact, uh, it's the same React component um, that is used uh, on top here. It's exactly the same component with some other props that's used for the minimap down here. So if I hold shift and I zoom, I can kind of drag it here or I can also zoom here. So these are just two React components of the same view. Um, if I go into the session, uh, this is also exactly the same React component, again, with uh, slightly different um, props, but um, pretty much the same logic here. For example, if I click on this thing, I get some uh, debug information. If I click on it here, uh, it just selects it, and then I can open this side panel. So the basic um, the basic graph editor is really a MobX store, and it's worth reading up on how MobX works um, and because it's really key. Um, there's some really, really nice properties of how it works. Um, all of these components here, they're of course React components, um, but they're actually mostly using SVG. Uh, so we're, so it's pure SVG where you where it's a lot of math to kind of say hey I want a box with these dimensions at this x and y um, with some rounded corners for example or I want a path and there's some formula that calculates exactly how it curves it's like a Bezier curve I guess and um, of course whenever we move something this all needs to be recalculated. So for example, if I hold shift and I drag this thing, what I'm doing is I'm pushing all of the elements. So what you're seeing here, you're seeing a bunch of um, kind of placeholders telling me how much time there is um, before the activity, in between the activity. Um, we're also kind of redrawing all of these different SVG elements. Um, if I'm dragging this activity, again, we're redrawing this um, this SVG paths whenever we uh, move this activity. So there's a lot of different calculations taking place and uh, MobX gives us a very nice um, way of kind of declaring these calculations in a single place and then having a, a kind of a dependency, almost like a spreadsheet where you change one value, all of the other, other values update uh, it keeps track of which values should update, and then it keeps track of which um, components should actually redraw in a very efficient way. So that's kind of the key thing. If we look at the code here, it's pretty much all under graph editor. And here, when we start out, I guess we come into the index. Um, so uh, this is where we, so we basically get routed here from the app. Um, if it's like slash slash teacher slash graph and what we do here here's an important thing so we have this store and by using this provider pattern which you can you can look at mobx dash react we're basically saying that all of the all of the components underneath here so inside the tree uh, editor container and its children will have access to this store and it's, we're using kind of context to pass it down and then we bound, bind a lot of hotkeys. Um, by the way, you can uh, click on the help menu and you can see, I think most of it should be updated. And there's also a video tutorial here um, to show you a bit more of the different interactions. And then this thing is just, um, so by the way, store.setID is quite important. That's how we actually update which graph um, uh, is displayed. So I'll show you where that happens. Um, assign graph, it basically looks for a graph ID that was requested, but if the user does not have access to that graph ID or it does not exist, or you did not provide a graph ID, it will automatically um, either take the first graph ID for that user or uh, create a brand new one if that user is just logging in for the first time. So we'll get the graph ID that's valid and we'll set it. And then there's a bunch of logic that gets triggered by that. So then we load this editor container and let's see, 
So this connect here, this is very important. It's coming from uh, the store and we'll show that. So what connect does is it basically takes the, the provider, so the store that was passed down through the provider and it makes it available as a prop to that React component and it also begins observing, as it's called, this um, React component. So in a way, it actually turns off the should component update and it kind of takes over um, the redraw flow of this whole React component uh, and you know only triggers a redraw if uh, a prop, um, a value that's being tracked in the MobX store gets updated or an external, um, an external prop. And um, we're doing some stuff here on resize because there's a bunch of logic tied to how big the, the graph editor actually is. Uh, one of the tricky parts is that we have, as you can see, we have these different zooms. Um, so this is drawing the same. Um, so this is actually done by changing kind of the dimensions of the SVG window. And then if I double click here, uh, we see here it's not actually always working, which is a big problem. Um, I'm not quite sure why that is. It should be. Uh, that's interesting. Yeah, so the idea is that when we double click, it should put a text field. And this is a DOM element. So this is using the DOM, um, you know, uh, CSS uh, position absolute X and Y or top or and left or whatever. And what we have to do is we have to map that location to the location given by the SVG, um, which is quite different. So there's a bunch of scaling and, and offsetting and all kinds of stuff happening. Um, it's usually working quite well. I'm not sure why it wasn't working. That's interesting. Yeah, there's some weird thing going on here. So as you can see, uh, it's not perfect. Um, yeah, I don't know what's wrong with this thing. Okay, that might be, maybe it's because, anyway. Um, so that's important. Okay, so that's why we, we trigger this um, this action whenever the, the window resizes. So if we do like this, you can see that it's kind of scaling um, the SVG. Um, also, I can say that uh, we made a decision to have the location of these activities be fixed per minute so you cannot actually put them um, at you know 2.5 minutes and we're also storing this internally uh, if you look at the database you'll see that activity starts at minute four it lasts five minutes um, so that's kind of how we determine the locate the, the y axis sorry the x axis and then we have functions that calculate from minute four to say well where is that exactly on the screen um, You'll see. Okay. Um, so then we basically render. We have the top bar. Um, we have um, the top panel, which is all these menus. Um, we have some modals uh, that might be open or not. And then we have the side panel. The side panels pretty complex, and that's a. I'm going to talk about that in a in a minute. We have some other models, the help model, change log model, the previews, and then somewhere in the here, editor panel. And I guess the editor panel is really the main thing. Let's see where, oh, so that the editor panel is just here. Uh, we have a tool tip, which is just when you mouse over something, and then we have the graph. And here we see it's scaled, it has a time scale, and it's editable. And so for example, the graph that we show in the in the session view when you're running a graph it's not editable right so we have a few different props here um, and then here you see that we actually render the graph again and here we say has pen map and um, that's the that's the one that's at the bottom where we can drag it back and forth now you'll see that um, we're not actually put passing any data into this graph and that's because this graph is a child of this uh, store provider, so it has access to the store and it can always look up all the data in the store. And this is the rename box. So this is what happens when you double click and this is the one that wasn't quite properly positioned. And then the graph is basically, so here you see connect. Um, 
Now you can you can use the decorator for a class, or you, more usually more commonly we use this connect function, which again comes from the the store here, right? And um, so we're picking in all these values from the store, and then we just draw a bunch of SVGs, and this view box stuff is pretty complex. Um, I'm not I I wouldn't say I understand it perfectly. It seems to work pretty well the way it is. Took a while to get it correct. So uh, basically it's a way of scaling the SVG. And um, then we have some rectangles just providing the background colors and uh, we listen to a click. So this is how we determine basically when you're double clicking, for example, to place a new item. Um, and then we have a bunch of different components. So we have the level lines and that would be these guys one two three four these are the uh you know individual group class only teacher and then we have the lines and that would be the connections here like this one that's a line we have the activities so each of these guys we have the operators so each of these guys uh, then we might have a progress line if this is a session so that's the vertical line that shows you where you are right now uh, we might have these drag guides if it's editable. So these are like the one that says four minutes on the left here. Uh, we might have the time scale if, uh, again, it has a time scale. Uh, we might have a drag line. Um, I think that would be actually the line that, so right now while I'm dragging this thing around, that's a drag line. Uh, then we have some transparent activities and operators, and I think that's just, uh, I think we're using those as click targets. Um, one of the interesting thing is that when you draw SVG, and we have a lot of different SVG elements here uh, that are listening to clicks, um, it matters in which order you draw them. So if we... Um, so uh, that's why it's important to, so for example, this, this activity, it has a bunch of different targets. And you notice here on the main body, um, it reacts to, so it changes the cursor and it means I can drag it back and forth. Uh, if I'm over this little thing here, it changes the cursor and this is where I generate the drag line. And if I'm at the end here, it changes the cursor again and it lets me resize. So these are all different SVG elements with different listeners. And if we get the order wrong, then um, we're not going to get the, we're not going to get the click elements where we want them, the click listeners. And, uh, and the scroll field, I think that's basically this, this black box here. Uh, yeah. And the error list is this thing here, um, showing us that we have some errors. Okay. Um, so most of these actual components should be easy enough. Um, so again, here, for example, is an activity. You see that it's connecting to the store. I'll show you the store in a moment. The store is really the, the most important thing here. Uh, and so we have um, an activity store under the store. And it has all, which is basically an array of um, activities. And we're just mapping over these activities and we're rendering an activity box for each activity. And um, uh, this is the activity box. So it's quite big because we're rendering all these different elements. Um, so we're rendering the box itself. We have two rectangles, one um, both empty, but uh, one of them, if it's selected, it's, this is the kind of outline. So you see here the red outline once I select an activity, right? That's um, this one, and this one is just uh, the normal box. Uh, then, yeah, you can look at this yourself. So draggable core is something we use quite a lot, and uh, we're using this. Uh, now, draggable uh, can manage the component itself, um, but we're using draggable core, so we're kind of using uh, the underlying mechanism because we want to manage the... Um, the updating of the of the box itself so we so all it does is it gives us information about the drag and then we are the ones that actually 
Um, so here, for example, we have this activity and the activity is a, a, a class. So it has methods. And in this case, it has the method move. And we're also passing in whether the shift key was pressed or not, um, because the difference is here, for example, um, if I, so if I drag this thing, that happens. If I shift drag, you see that everything's moving. So it makes a difference. So this just calls acti activity move and on stop, it just calls stop moving. And then it just listens to the store about where the activity is. And of course, this activity.move will update something on the activity if, um, if there's no boundary. So it does a bunch of checks to see exactly what should be updated, right? It doesn't blindly move the activity. And uh, here it you know, takes the X and the Y from the activity and stuff like that. Here we see the cursor is being set. Um, and uh, yeah, here the reason we have so many different components is because we have this, as I was just showing you, we have this circle. Um, we have the line that you can drag out of the circle. You can re 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 um, resize it and so on and so on. So, you know, this is you know slightly complex but it should be pretty clear this is basically just display and all of the logic is in the store so let's go look at the store and the store has an index but the index really just uh, imports the, the the store class from slash store and then it creates a new singleton and it also puts that on the window if we ever want to just do use it for debugging and then it exports this connect function, right? Which both injects the store and turns the component into an observer. So you can uh, look at how MobX React works to uh, understand that pattern better. But basically it gives any um, React component that's a child of that provider somewhere in the tree, gives it access to the store as a prop. So the main thing here is the store. Right, this is um, really, uh, yeah, so this is where the store is being defined here. Um, we're actually trying to use flow to define the state. So for example, we're keeping track of like what is happening right now. So are we resizing an activity? Are we moving an activity? And in that case, we wanna keep track of what activity are we moving? Um, where do we start from? Where is the mouse right now? Are we uh, moving an operator? Are we placing an operator? So that's, for example, when I press S, now I'm in the mode placing an operator. So there's a, an operator following my mouse. And when I click somewhere, I place it there. Um, and then we have some utility functions. Um, and then here we see, so this is the class store. And we use this extend observable um, to define all the MobX functionality. So the important thing here is that we have some sub stores. So these are just other classes. We have a connection store, an activity store, an operator store, right? So these are for those three elements. Um, we also uh, keep track of a session. And we have a UI store, which is basically kind of zoom state, mouse state, these kind of things. Uh, we keep track of the graph ID. So this is the current graph. We keep track of the errors, which is what you see when you mouse over the, the error bar and whether the graph is valid um, and whether the graph is read-only, right? And here's the key thing. So this get thing defines a computed value. So this, isn't, so this is accessible as an attribute, right? So you can do store.graph duration. You don't need the, the parenthesis. And it will recalculate whenever any of these values here change and it will cache the value um, as long as those, those values don't change. So you can put some very expensive calculation in here and you don't really have to worry that um, it will only be calculated when it's needed, but it will always be calculated when needed. So this is a very, very good place to put all the logic that we want to keep. Um, uh, yeah. So here, for example, uh, now anything that updates the, the MobX um, values should be wrapped in an action. 
uh, that makes this thing uh, an atomic action, meaning that it will not trigger a re-render of any element until the whole action is complete, right? Because here we might set a bunch of different mobx values and we don't want um, the graph to, to start re-rendering as we're setting these. We wanna wait until we've set them all and then it will trigger a re-render. Re uh, so, for example, when we, when you change the duration, we check that it's valid. Um, we check the pan time, which is basically where you know. So right now, this pan time is two minutes, right? It's kind of where we're we're panned <laughs> on the screen, um, and we sh we check the scale. We recalculate the scale, uh, the pan delta. There's all kinds of stuff that's that's happening. Um, Set ID is what I mentioned. This is where we actually re load a completely different graph. Um, so we update the URL. You see here that the URL reflects the um, ID of the current graph. So we use the browser history for that. Um, then we actually go and find that graph in the Mongo database. And uh, then we load in the data from Mongo and we create all of these new objects. Uh, we instantiate all of these new objects in the uh, in the shared DB, the, the shared sorry, the the MobX store from based on the Mongo data. So we have activities. We create operators. We create connections, and there we are. Uh, we have some add history. This is basically for the undo. So every time we make a change that is uh, should be undoable, we call the add history function, and it basically makes a copy of the store and then we have um, uh, refresh validate runs a bunch of validation functions and this is also whenever we change so we can see here now that it's uh, invalid because there's all kinds of problems and uh, let's see this one for example so if I delete this one it'll rerun the validation if I delete these guys now it should be now it's valid so you see whenever you make a change it reruns all the validations and then it updates this thing based on how many errors you have um, here's the undo and again it, it kind of pops the history and then it, it re reinitializes the all the stores based on on that history um, so there's a like, I'm not going to walk through um, all of these um, all of these functions. Mongo Watch basically um, listens to um, updates in the Mongo database and then um, updates the activities, connections, and operators if they are changed. So. As I said, we have the UI store, which is just a bunch of different functions around uh, scale, zooming, is the modal open, this, that, and other. Um, and let's let's look at the activity store, for example. So the activity store uh, basically has all the acti all the logic around activities. It has this all, which is an array of activities, and then it has functions such as um, Organize, which is, um, you know, I can go here and I can say, so I'm going to zoom out. So I can click on Z and now it either lines them all up or it spaces them equally or it puts them back to where they were. So that's um, this organize logic. Um, resize is, is run from here. Add activity. So if I double click and uh, to add a new activity, it will check whether it's read only. Uh, it will check where my mouse is. Uh, this come for, comes from the UI store. I will check, you know, check all these kind of validations, whether I, I clicked shift when I inserted the activity. And then in the end, it'll create a new activity here and then it'll push it into the store. So this all push new activities. So we'll add it uh, to, the, to the list and then it will run store add history to add the, the undo history, right? And just to show the activity. So each activity on the graph is backed by, by one of these. Um, so this is the constructor, so we have a plane, so it's either one, two, three, or four, a start time, a title, a length, which is again in minutes, right? So this is start time four and length uh, five, I think. It has um, an activity type, this can be empty, um, then it's undefined, 
it uh, has an ID, which is a UUID, and a state, and this is if it's being, uh, uh, yeah. So here we have, a, so update is um, basically if it's being updated in the, in the Mongo database. Rename, if we double click and we rename it. Move, uh, there's a bunch of logic there because if we're holding the shift key, then we might need to push activities and operators, right? This is what I'm doing if I'm dragging like this. It's actually um, pushing all of those things ahead of me together with activity. Um, so there's a bunch of you know resize uh, and so on. And then you see there's a ton of different computed values. Uh, so even title is not actually stored um, because it might be, uh, if we're actually exporting this as an image, we also store the number of the activity. And if not, we just show the raw title. Um, so we have values like X scaled, screen X, width scaled. Again, these could be functions. Uh, I mean, they are, they are functions, but because we make them available like this, we assure that these values are cached so that whenever, if we need to, to access these values many times, um, it's actually very, very efficient. And so what I'm trying to do is to put all of this complex logic in these, um, in these stores, and then all the actual React components that need to access these values, um, they can very quickly and just use X scaled on an activity and they don't have to worry about how that value got there, what the logic behind it is. So we don't need to have a logic about scaling X wherever we need to draw it. We just have it a single place and all of those React components, they can be you know, really just focused on, on the display. Um, yeah, so the same logic for connection um, and for operator. And um, there is another element, which is the side panel. That's also fairly complex because, um, so this is the side panel. And the problem with the side panel is that it's both um, connected to the MobX store and directly to the Mongo database. And this causes some, uh, a number of issues. And I'm actually planning to rewrite it so that um, so that the side panel only connects to the MobX store and that all the writes to the writes and reads from the database goes through the MobX store because that will make things much cleaner. Um, there's all kinds of complicated stuff going on in the side panel. Um, Anurag has been doing a little bit of work on it uh, and we're planning to do much more, but I think this is already enough for one video. So I'm gonna pause it here and uh, let me know if you have any questions.